Look Back is a minimalist anime film, a Japanese animated feature which is hardly grand in scope or scale, but in its limited view, explodes with small and powerful emotion. It's a film that, by nature of its confined settings and characters, focuses on simple pleasures more than grand spectacle or great battles. Where bigger Japanese projects arising from the likes of Studio Ghibli live and breathe through odd, fantastical worlds, painstakingly detailing concepts far beyond the everyday, Look Back places such emphasis on the power of stupid, simple moments. There's such a tremendous quality to even the most seemingly inconsequential moments, such as Fujino's happy skip after being praised by somebody she admires. Uniquely, Look Back engrosses you in the smallest environments. Few films can absorb you in a mere hallway the way Look Back does, and while a Studio Ghibli feature could absolutely pull you in with the mere sight of, say, an elevator, that elevator is going somewhere important. It's mostly transitionary, a prelude to more exciting things, but Look Back manages to make a mere hallway leading to nothing more than a vacant bedroom one of the most contemplative, emotional settings in the entire movie. And if Look Back has a theme, it is found in those simple emotions, in those simple places. The film's final understanding is that above all else, simple pleasures are what add the color to life. It is far bleaker without them. Look Back follows the ascension of Fujino, a talented manga artist, her lonely success story, and the joys she forgets along the way. Though the soul of Look Back is found in the ever-growing friendship between Fujino and Kiyomoto, their bond fades as time goes on. As Fujino achieves professionally, she loses her friend and happiness along the way, but continues in her career. The climax of the film tragically reminds Fujino of everything she has turned her back on, and everything she'll never have again. Finding out about Kiyomoto's death sparks Fujino's emotional responses like nothing else in her environment. Where she has been mostly dead at her desk, she's now frightened, instinctively called to action by the loss of somebody she cares about. She grabs her phone, shakily calls Kiyomoto with waning hope, leaps from her chair, paces back and forth in her office, waits for her to pick up. When the bad news reaches Fujino, the film takes a dark turn. She experiences the sudden realization that she will never again walk in the snow with her best friend Kimoto, that they will never draw another manga together, and that she will never hear praise and admiration from her ever again. In spite of everything Fujino has accomplished alone, she doesn't have the strength for this. Nothing could have prepared her for such tragedy. This, above all else, is the most devastating blow of the film, because it's the moment Fujino realizes all that she's taken for granted. Even as she ascends in the world of manga creation and distribution, Fujino's place at the top of the world is lonely, cold, and corporate. Lucrative, but dull. In her attempts to become rich, famous, or otherwise successful in the eyes of the world, Fujino has lost touch with the simple joys of her youth. Where she now has money, success, and an audience beyond anything she's ever had before, there is nothing tremendous in Fujino's world, nothing quite like her youth. No amount of sales can even match the triumphant exhilaration of being praised by Kiyomoto years and years ago. It is funny how the compliments of a friend can stick to the heart longer than any sense of achievement in the professional world. And that is because Kiyomoto, just like any true friends or family, is a fan worth a million fans. Despite her outward desires, Fujino doesn't really want to be rich, nor does she want a huge audience. She, like any artist or creative, is only looking for the simple interest and excitement of those closest to her, those few whom she admires and wants to impress. Kimoto's passion for Fujino's work grants her the biggest motivation boost in the entire film. There's no singular moment, neither before nor after this, which even comes close to matching that triumphant skip through the field. That burst of joy Fujino feels then is never quite replicated anywhere else in the film. It's a joy that even a million fans around the world can't arise in Fujino, because no artist wants global praise, really. Fame is shallow, success can be lonely, but the memories of that one fan 
that one truest friend, somebody who loves what you do even when nobody else does, are what stick with you and never go away. That fan who is underneath it all, your best friend and your family, and without whom none of this matters. For the artists, or anybody rabidly chasing success, look back as a sentimental reminder of life's little joys, and the importance of everyday connections. It's so unabashedly absorbed in the littlest details, the most inconsequential moments, because despite the constant spectacle we're programmed to want and look for in our lives, it's truly the unseen and nooks and crannies of our world which produce the most everlasting memories. And the ones who grant us the most joy are the people so close to us we might even overlook them. But surely, we'll notice when they're gone. Even as she ascends mountains, finds success in her work, and becomes the noteworthy person she's always sought to be, where does Fujino find herself returning to? Those short hallways, those cramped rooms, those dumb joys, and those silly, childish little comic strips. All reminders of a simpler time, back when it barely took anything to excite her. Even as the world now hangs on her every stroke, eating up her manga series and making her a star, Fujino is still dissatisfied. She has entered a world devoid of simple pleasures. Everything at once can't seem to get even a rise out of her. But the distant hope at the end of Look Back is that she will one day soon remember how to be pleased by nothing at all. Perhaps Kiyomoto's passing was the wake-up call Fujino needed to remember to enjoy what is there around her before it, or she, is gone. Life is fleeting, and what we don't appreciate here and now is what we'll regret taking for granted later, when it is no more. Fujino was moved to sorrow and reminiscence by Kiyomoto's death, but the true warning of Look Back is to not wait until that irreversible tragedy to value who and what we have. Love them while they're here, because you never know when they will be gone, and when you'll never have a chance to appreciate them again. In the chaos and movement of life, it is vital to remember always how lucky we are to have just the clothes we wear, the place we live in, the people we know, and the joys we share with them. Because the last thing you want to do is look back and find you took it for granted. If you did find this video insightful or meaningful, please, please, please consider supporting my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Orion Trips. If you support the page there, you can get early access to new videos like this. If you choose to support, thank you very much. Otherwise, thank you for watching the video. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.